Today I'm going to show you how to become a certified red team professional. And for that, make sure you stick until the end of this video because I'm sharing my top 5 tips to pass this exam. Now, if you haven't heard about the CRTP, let me tell you why this is an amazing certification to have. The CRTP is a completely hands-on certification, and in order to be certified, you'll have to be able to compromise a fully patched Active Directory infrastructure containing multiple Windows domains and forests. Another thing is, you'll have the possibility to solve all the labs and challenges either by using standalone tools or by using a C2, which stands for Command and Control. And last but not least, Altered Security provides solutions for all the labs and challenges. And that means that even if you get stuck after trying everything you know, you can just use the lab manual or the video walkthroughs to get a step-by-step -step solution. How cool is that? And you know what else is cool? Two weeks ago, with the help of Altered Security, we agreed on giving away a certified Red Team professional certification voucher but if you're watching this it means that the giveaway has come to an end and yeah i know it's kind of bad news even if you participated and did it one but don't worry it looks like we are approaching 10k subscribers which is amazing and i have some things planned for the near future so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that now back to the video when you decide to go for the crtp certification you have two options you can either go for the on-demand course or you can go for the bootcamp me personally i went for the bootcamp but the only difference in my opinion is, is that you get to assist to the classes live and you can ask questions to the instructor on Discord while he is explaining all the materials. In terms of pricing, it's $50 more expensive across all options if you compare it with the on-demand course, but if you like live classes, I think you should go for it. Now, let me tell you how I think you should prepare for the exam. First, I think you should go through all the course materials regardless if it's the live lessons or the on-demand course. This will help you realize if there's any aspect or concept that you don't quite understand. Now, if that happens, you can just rewatch that entire module or even ask questions to the instructor if you're participating in the bootcamp and going through the live lessons. Or if you're using the on-demand courses, you can just go to Altered Security's Discord channel and ask your questions there. Now, I don't recommend trying to solve the challenges and the labs while you're also watching the course lessons. Because I think that first, you should try to understand why a certain thing works like that and how you can exploit it. So then you can apply the theoretical knowledge you just learned into a practical approach by using the labs. But this is just what works best for me, okay? I like to separate the theoretical learning from the practical learning because I just like to use different techniques for both. Now, while you're going through the study materials, please remember to take notes. You should be taking notes on things like what is the vulnerability and how does it work? What can be achieved with this attack? And how to perform the attack? Then what tools can be used? And even if that tool doesn't work, are there any alternatives. Then you should also note examples of the commands you're using and examples of success messages and error messages. And in that case, what can you do to overcome those? And trust me, all of this will be tremendously helpful during the exam, especially when it comes to saving time. After that, you should try the labs for the first time. And it's pretty normal to get stuck and not knowing what to do at first. So again, if that happens and you've tried everything you know, make sure you check the lab manual and the video walkthroughs that will give you a step-by-step -step solution in order for you to solve the challenges. Now, in my opinion, you should just check those to get little hints to check if your thought process is correct and if you're going in the right direction. Now, if you're totally clueless and you're, you don't know what you're doing, by all means, just check the solutions and try to follow it step by step and I'm sure you'll get through the challenges. Now, after you complete the labs for the first time by using the lab manual and the video walkthroughs, you should try to complete the labs for a second time without any help or hints whatsoever. Because this will test your understanding on the many different exploitation techniques, tools and general Active Directory security concepts. And if you manage to do it, I think you're pretty much ready to tackle the exam. Now, finally, as promised, let me give you five Five crucial tips if you want to clear this exam in your very first attempt. Tip number one is have everything ready prior to the exam. And with this, I mean tools, notes, scripts, and everything you're planning on using during the exam. Because the student VM that you're going to get during the exam won't have any of the tools preloaded. So keep that in mind. Tip number two is note and screenshot everything you do. This one is very self-explanatory. When I was done with my exam, my brain was completely fried, but I was very happy with myself for doing pretty much all the reporting while I was doing the exam. So in the end, it was just a matter of going through all of it and making it look pretty before submitting it to evaluation. Tip number three is create a graphical representation of your target. During the course, you realize that the instructor is using Microsoft Paint a lot, and that's because it helps him to explain different 
different and a little bit abstract concepts in a more visual way. And by doing that, I realized that it was easy for me to internalize things. So as soon as I started my exam and was done with some basic initial enumeration, I used MS Paint to draw my target's Active Directory structure, including forests, domains, servers, users, all of it. And I actually kept on using that diagram throughout my exam, taking every single asset and user as owned while I was compromising them. Tip number four is have a backup plan for everything. This one is very simple and straightforward, but let me give you an example. If you're using a particular tool or script for a specific attack technique, consider having a plan B or an alternative to execute it, because you don't want to get stuck just because your main plan doesn't work. And trust me, this might save you on the exam. And tip number five is don't forget to reset your target machines. If you feel like something should be working and it's not, it doesn't hurt anyone if you just stop, take a second and reset whatever target machine you're trying to compromise. I mean, tech can be unpredictable sometimes, right? And if you've been trying different tools and different attacks, there's a high chance that you might have created too many tickets or maybe you have overloaded this machine. And so remember that by resetting your target, you might get things to work as they should and avoid some unnecessary stress. I hope this video will be useful for someone and if so please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!